time just changing. Annabelle, um, it is it is it is chilly out. It's not as cold as like I thought it would be, or maybe as people would expect up in the um, Outer Hebrides. We found a campsite um, on we're on um, Harris, the Isle of Island of Harris. <clears throat> And there are lots of spots where campers are welcome and um, they provide stuff for campers. So Russ has gone to have a shower, which is way over by the by the um, beach. Um, not in this spot, but you can camp right next to it. But it's like a it's got like a visitor area, and um, we kind of don't like that because I don't want to be sitting next to somebody else and be able to look through the window and watch their TV. Me and Russ, neither of us are like that. We found this other campsite. There were four spots on here, and they're electric hookup, which is great. So we've got our electric heater on, which I much prefer than the van heater. So it keeps all the windows clear, and we can just sit here because we are warmer now, aren't we? She says, "Mom, get me dressed," and he says, "Mom, put the change of clothes on." So Annie's bag is this bag. It's got various items in, and um, luckily. They are dolls, reborn dolls, not dolls for children because of what's inside them. They're not CE tested or anything. And um, you can leave their clothes on for as long as you like. Don't fall off the, don't fall off the chair, honey. Don't fall off the chair. So I'm pretty tight. You've got mum's a little snuggly, haven't you? So I'm putting, um, putting tights on first. And he's so, he, and he's much easier to dress than some of the other full limbed dolls because she has three quarter limbs, and I always find that a three quarter limbed is easier to dress. So I'm putting tights on her now that are quite light. Um, they're not heavy tights because she's going to have black leggings on. And they're new, and I don't want them. Um, I'm, I just get concerned that they will rub on her legs. Now I could keep just keep the tights on, but this is the outfit that I chose for today. So this is what she's been wearing. We've got a beautiful view out all across. the uh, west coast here. Oh, I think it's the Atlantic Ocean. I think it's the Atlantic Ocean still, I think. I'm not going to put her on a vest because this, is, this has a high neck. So I'm going to put this dress on her, which you would have seen on Katie my Christmas baby, which I was having an iron about bringing her with me this week while we're away, but um, Annie's, Annie's my therapy doll, so Annie's much better to come with me. Annie's like a mini, Annie represents the mini me. There we go, sweetheart. And so that means she has to be loved, warm, clothed, clean, all the things that my little didn't get. There you go pumpkin. Oh you look so cute in red. You look so cute in red. You do. I like it that the neck's high which is really good for our reboards because of that if you don't like to see the cloth body which I'm not a fan of. Oh, wow, my word. I will put, yeah, I'll put your furry boots back on. I'll put these furry boots back on her. Keep her feet warm. Mum's got her boots on. And I've got, um, this is a thermal, but breathable um, top. I did have my um, thermal leggings on yesterday. Uh, but it got quite warm because it's not actually that bad up here. I think it's something like four degrees, so it's not that bad. 
Yeah, we won't forget your bracelet, must we? You mustn't forget your bracelet. No, there's no snowmen up here. If we went to Aviemore, there'd be snow, but I think by the time we get there, the snow will be gone. And there she is. Come on, pumpkin. There she is, everybody. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you're all nice and warm, aren't you now? Lovely dress on that. I think it suits her. I love the colour on her. Love it. Mm. Mwah. Love the frill. So unusual with the frill around here. And the frill around the neck. There, now you won't get any black on your legs because you've got a good pair of tights on. Underneath. So that's good. There we go. Say have a good day everybody. Have a good day. We're going to have some breakfast now, aren't we? We've got lawn sausage, baked beans, and an egg. Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy. Tummy, tummy. Exactly. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Here's today's view. So, in the changing, in the video of Annabelle, I said it was day four. It's actually not day five because we had day one was on a Sunday. Highland cows down there. Huh? It's Millie really loving it. So this is a site with electric hookups. It's got four. Actually, I thought it had four. It's got five. It's got another hookup up there. The water coming down. Lovely fresh water. So over by the beach there is where there are, it's like a community hub where they have more hookups and toilets and showers. That's where me and Russ have been both this morning. So here we go. Suggested donation, £15 a night. That is for use of this lovely clean site completely blocked in because of the cows and the sheep. It's not the cows and the sheep from getting in. And um everybody's loving it. And so what you do is it's like an honesty box. You get an envelope out of here. Which we have already done. Get an envelope out of here and you pop it in the box here. Ours is in there. Russell's already done ours, yeah. Ours is in there. You can see it there, look. So that's for this view. Lovely. We're so lucky. Here comes Russell with the camper. So we're all packed up now, ready to go. There's a key in the jetty there, <laughs> wow, can we, can we just sit there and take a photo? Right, don't stop that. Yeah, no, but I like to take a photo of it. I can't take a photo while I'm videoing. I could on my, um, before it updated. See there, private guidance. Maybe it's, um, Maybe it's like flats and let to people. I don't know. I've got more vehicles than we will pass summer. Maybe it closes for the winter, the hotel's not worth opening. <coughs> That's lovely, aren't it? Mm. It's like fresh, doesn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. All the way along now.
up wires up like that and hold a few wooden telegraph poles up there, you can stand that lot. <laughs> well, you've got a sacrifice for you, isn't there? You know, you know that. Come and sacrifice you, us. Sacrifice you. No, come and sacrifice you. You'll do a funny dance. Look <laughs> how you are, Stone. <laughs> Oh, cool down the... Or something gods. Oh, no, Ross, here's another one of those yeah, gates. Yeah. It's going to flummox you. Wow. Tornaeus Standing Stones, an ancient centre of power. Stowe Circle is an extraordinary testament to the skills and determination of the people who lived here over 4,000 years ago. This is a person that's never lived here and is still struggling with a gate. The stones were probably moved with rollers, wooden frames and brute strength. It was a tremendous investment of time and effort. The purpose of the stones remains a mystery. During the Neolithic period, many communities across the northwest Europe constructed large monuments of stone and earth. Perhaps the building work gave people a common identity and stability. Uh, that, uh, or perhaps they worship. Just hang on a minute. Elsewhere, the builders clearly orientated monuments according to astronomical events such as midwinter, sunrise, and sunset. It's unclear whether this is the case of the Catalans. <laughs> Russell believes that these are man. These are made in more recent times. Oh, that's my case. The site was excavated in 1980 and 81. During the work, one fallen stone was re-erected in its original spot. One stone, Russ. Only one. All the rest were still here. Oh, here we go, look. I wonder if it was something towards the sun. Because when the sun sun's up there, they all face the same way. Very strange. An early engraving of the stones published in 1703 by the Scottish traveller Martin Martin. See? They weren't all. Well, look, can you see stones in that picture behind them? Exactly. Because you don't know where that stone... That was taken facing that way. Yeah. So it could just be it. one, like yeah. that one there. Yeah. Boom, bah, humbug. Yeah. Who brings Grumpy to somewhere historic, eh? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. But actually, you're allowed to touch these and you're, um, you're allowed to hug them and things feel their majesticness. Unlike Stonehenge. and erected with cooperation of Ard Royal Grazings Committee. It was based on the, one of the kings in the famous collection of walrus ivory chess pieces which were discovered near here in 1831. They were found by Malcolm McLeod of Penny Donald hidden inside a small stone structure in a sand dune but the exact fine spot is not known. Eleven of the exquisitely carved figures are in the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh and 82 in the British Museum in London. They were probably made in Norway in the 12th century. 
during the 450 year period when the Norse ruled the Western Isles. So as we were driving around, we came across this like little, um, little like housing area. I want to say housing area, but it was like a caravan, a few caravans and things. And um, outside was like a little shop. Um, and it was like a little, uh, oh my God, it wasn't a shop like you walk in. It was just a little wooden, just like a little wooden cupboard with a see-through door up off the ground and you opened that and there were some shelves and it was all full of handmade items. And so I bought some beeswax chess pieces. They are made with sand from the beach around here, which is called Andrew. Ardroil, Andrew, I think, on the Isle of Lewis. They are made using, yeah, Ardroil sand, British beeswax. Look, so it's a, it's a chess piece, and it represents the chess pieces that were found in this area. And this little set here was ten pounds which obviously goes to help that little community. That's one of their ways of making some money. So me and Russ just like do like to buy local to help the community out. And there's another piece. How cute is that? My little, crust, my little uh, souvenir. Well, I won't burn it. No way will I burn it. But I'd like to set it up in something. Like one of those domes where they don't get disturbed. I'd like to set it up in that, I think. They've got a sky. Does that mean their internet would be better? Because they get it 